All right, here we go with our video 6.1, Organizing the Elements, where we're going to really start to take a closer look at the periodic table. So chemists traditionally have used the properties of elements to sort them into groups, and really traditionally it was physical properties of elements. But as they started discovering more elements and learning more, they found that it became difficult to sort all elements into the group, into specific groups. Then along came this one scientist, Dmitry Mendeleev, and he arranged the elements into an early version of the periodic table, his periodic table, in order of increasing atomic mass. And as he started looking more closely at it, he started to see that some properties of elements seemed to fit better if he switched the order. As initially, he started to see that he observed that similar chemical and physical properties appeared at regular intervals or periods in his table. But then when he started switching the order around a little bit, he found that it seemed to make a bit more sense. And this led to putting together the modern of periodic law and the modern periodic table, where the properties of elements are periodic functions of their atomic numbers. So Mendeleev did his based on mass and our modern periodic table is based on the atomic number. And if we take a look at the modern periodic table, this is a little bit different than what you're used to seeing. I know I've talked about it a couple of times, right? Those boxes underneath actually fit in right here. Okay, so this is what I like to call the real periodic table. But the one we're used to seeing is more compacted. By taking these out and putting them underneath, we can kind of compact it together and make it take up less space. All right, anyway, the modern periodic table, the periods refer to the rows, and we're going to learn that they're related to the specific shells of electrons or the, the principal energy levels of electrons. And Groups are the columns. All right, so properties of elements within a period change as you move from left to right. So if, you know, here's a quick sketch of a periodic table, right? And as you move from left to right, the properties change. And this pattern is repeated from one period to the next, or from one row to the next. The, the pattern of properties is repeated. And <clears throat> what you'll see is as we go down, a group shares similar properties. All right, we're going to talk about three classes of elements, or three main groups. And those are metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. And as you go across the periodic table, across a period, elements become less metallic and more non-metallic. Because our metals are on this side, and our non-metals are here, and the metalloids are kind of in between. So as we go this way, they're metallic here, they're becoming less metallic and more non-metallic. <coughs> Sorry. Okay, so metals. If you look at this picture here, we can see that the metals are the yellow, so all of these, all these yellow things are considered metals. Okay. Over here, you can see the blue are the non-metals, and these green ones are the metalloids. Now, something that I'd like to point out is hydrogen and helium are kind of odd. Right, hydrogen is all the way here on the left with the metals, and that's only because it kind of belongs in group one. We could almost put it here, but then it wouldn't really match this group. Helium, we could take and put here, and in a sense, helium kind of belongs here, but it also belongs with this group, and we're going to learn more about that as we get a little further into the periodic table. All right, so metals. 
<clears throat> Most elements are metals. All those yellows were metals. A few common features of metals. They, are, they tend to be good conductors of heat and electric current. And if we say conductor, usually it means it'll conduct both heat and electric current. They have a high luster or sheen when they're clean, of course, when they're dirty or oxidized on the outside. They're not, but when they're clean. And by high luster or sheen, just kind of means that they're, they tend to be shiny. They're solids at room temperature, with the exception of mercury, which is a liquid. Other than that, all metals at room temperature are solids. They are ductile. What that means, they can be drawn into wires. So you can kind of soften it up and pull it out and make a wire out of it. And they are also malleable. Malleum's malleable, which is kind of a synonym for bendable. Well, what we mean uh, in chemistry by that is it can be hammered into a thin sheet without breaking. Uh, kind of like sheet metal. All right, non-metals. All right, so here are our <coughs> non-metals. And then hydrogen as well. Okay? Now, there's a greater variation in physical properties among nonmetals. Where metals tend to be more similar to one another, nonmetals is a huge variety. Most of them are gases at room temperature, like oxygen, nitrogen, right? Oxygen, nitrogen. There are some solids, things like phosphorus, phosphorus and sulfur are solids. There's only one liquid, bromine. That's a dark red liquid. They tend to be poor conductors of electricity. Carbon can conduct electricity. Other than that, they tend to be poor conductors of electricity. And they are brittle. What brittle means is that they will shatter if you hit them with a the hammer. So a metal can be malleable. You can hammer it into a sheet. Non-metals are not malleable. They are brittle. They will break. All right, then the oddball out are these metalloids. All right, you see this little step staircase? Do, 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 do. Most of them touching the step staircase, these green ones here, are metalloids, not aluminum or polonium. But these are metalloids. <clears throat> okay, so the metalloids bore to that heavy stair step line on the periodic table except for aluminum and polonium. They have properties similar to both metals and nonmetals. They're lustrous like metals, right? Remember, lustrous was shiny. But they're also brittle like nonmetals, right? They're, it's difficult to hammer them into a sheet or pull them into a wire, so they're not ductile, so they're brittle. Right, and the properties can be conditional. For example, like silicon is by itself a poor conductor, but if you add a little bit of boron, mix it in, then it'll become a good conductor. All right, that's 6.1, and uh, I'll see you guys in school.